OBS recording guides are one of my most popular videos on this channel. So I wanted to make an updated 2024 version and show you guys some new settings and features you can use. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. First things first, what you need to do is obviously download OBS Studio. I prefer OBS Studio, but you can download a Streamlabs OBS as well. That will work just as fine. And when you do open that, go to settings. And once you do that, you can go to video first over here. So once you go to video, you will see your resolution. In the base canvas resolution, you want to choose your monitor resolution. For me, it is 1440p, which is 2K. Whatever your monitor resolution is, if you have a 1080p, 2K, 4K, whatever, choose that resolution over here. And the output scaled resolution is the resolution you want to be recording at. So if you want to record at 1440p, choose 1440p. If you want to record at uh, 1080p, like full HD, you can do that right here as well. So choose whatever resolution you want to be recording at. I recommend 2K. That's just, you know, in between. If you have a really good PC, you can record even 4K if you have a 4K monitor. But that should be right over here. So common FPS value, you can choose 60 over here. And then if you are doing just chatting, you can choose 30. But I do recommend 60 for like gaming and all these things that are moving really fast. It just looks way better. Downscale filter, you don't need to do anything over here because the resolutions are matching. And then the second things we want to change are in the output tab. So we go to the output tab right over here. And once that opens up, we want to go into the output mode and choose advanced. It will be simple. It will look like this, but choose advanced so we get more options. Once you go advanced, you want to go from streaming to recording because we don't want to change any of the streaming settings. This is a recording settings video. So we click on recording and now we see a bunch of different things. Let me explain what each one does and why you should set it up just like that. So first you have type, you have standard and you have the custom output FFmpeg. You don't want to do that. Just choose standard right here. That's just enough. And then recording path, you want to choose where you want this to uh, the video to go when you record it. I have it set up in my videos and then I made another folder called recording. You can save it to your desktop, downloads, wherever you want. Choose the recording path right over here. And then you can generate the file name without the space if you want. That's totally fine with me. I don't really care about that. I'm not going to check that. Recording format. So here we go with the most important things. So what I recommended in the other videos and what is not good anymore is the recording in MP4. You should never, ever record in MP4. Even when you choose MP4, it will say recording save to MP4 will be unrecoverable if something happens, which, you know, if your PC shuts down, if OBS crashes, if anything happens, your recording will be gone. If you're recording for an hour and you like you've been recording for 58 minutes and you just need two more minutes and your OBS crashes, you lose the whole 58 minute footage. If you choose MKV, whatever happens, it will stop right there. So for example, if you've been recording for 58 minutes and something happens, it will cut there and you will have the whole 58 minute footage. So you will not lose anything. That's perfect for us. That's what you should be doing and not anything else because there's just no point. We will be converting this MKV to MP4 later anyway for editing because most programs do not support MKV like Premiere Pro. So we'll be doing that later. I'll explain how you can change that. But video encoder, this is the second most important thing. We want to choose NVIDIA NVENC and not H.264, which we used before. We want to use AV1. If you have a 40 series cards, which not a lot of people do, but if you do have it, make sure to choose AV1. It's really, really good. It uses super low amount of resources and it looks fantastic. So if you have a 40 series cards, choose AV1. If you don't, you can go with something like H, uh, HEVC or H.264. That's just enough. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, if you have AMD, they will have something similar. But if you don't even have a GPU at all, you can go with X264. If you scroll down, you will see X264, which is the CPU encoder. So choose that and then you will see a bunch of different presets right there, which we will go over in just a second. If you choose AV1, uh, audio encoder should be the FFmpeg AAC. All the other ones are not really important. We don't want to change those. Uh, if you choose the HD64, the settings should be pretty similar as well. I don't think anything really changes. Uh, and then audio track, you have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that means whatever audio track you want to record at. And what that means is if you're recording, for example, two tracks, you have your gameplay and you have your audio. In editing, you will have both of those uh, things in separate tracks. You can edit separately uh, the audio from your microphone and the audio from your game. So it's not the same and then it's like super complicated to edit it out. Make sure to choose 
at least two audio tracks, at least for me, if you need more, choose more. We will be assigning these tracks later to specific things. And then you have the rescale output. We don't want to change that. We already chose the resolution in video. Uh, custom master settings, we don't want to change that at all. Automatic, automatic file splitting, you can do that if you want to split by time or size, whatever. So like if you have a you know 15 minute recording, it's going to cut it and it's going to start a new one. Uh, you know, every 15 minutes. If you want to do by size, you can do like every five gigs or every 10 gigs or whatever you want. I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to choose that. Encoder settings. So here we go with some of the changes that you want to do to make sure that your footage looks good and it doesn't lag. So rate control, you, there's a bunch of different rate controls, but the one we want to be using for recording should be CQP. The CQP uh, is one of the better rate controls for recording. If you want to stream, you, you usually choose CBR, but for recording, the best one is CQP. The CQP one looks really good, but the file sizes are massive. So that's the only downside about this uh, rate control. But the CQ level is basically the level, like the bit rate on CBR. You want to go from 10K to 50K, the files will be obviously much bigger, but the quality will be much better. So CQ level, usually the best one is 18, you know, plus minus one. I found 18 to be the sweet spot for this file size and for the quality. If you do want to make it look better, the lower number will look better, but it will use way more resources and it will be huge on the file size. If you want to, you know, if you still lag, you can up this number up to like 30 and you will lose quality, obviously, but the file size will be much, much smaller. So choose, you know, around 18, 17, I'd say minimum. That's all. That's already going to be really, really big file size. And then maybe go to like 25-ish if you really have to. Keyframe interval, keep that at zero seconds. And then preset, you want to choose the P5 slow good quality. If you go lower, it will just use a lot more resources on your PC. And if you go higher, it will be uh, not using resources, but the footage will be worse. So if you are struggling, you can up these numbers or go lower over here to uh, you know lower the quality, but save your PC if you really have to. The sweet spot... P5, just as fine. And then the tuning, you have the high quality, low latency, and the ultra low latency. I usually keep it at high quality. I don't really see the difference between the high quality and the low latency. But again, if you're having any issues, lower this down. Multipass mode, uh, the sweet spot is again, two passes, quarter resolution. If you have a beast of a PC, you can go full resolution. But most of the time, it's overkill. You don't really need it. And if you're struggling, you can go single pass. So that's if you're using the NVENC encoder. If you're using the X264, you want to choose the CPU usage preset over here from super fast or ultra fast to placebo. Basically, the lower this is, the better quality it is, and the higher it will be using less uh, resources on your PC. So if you are using a single PC setup, usually very fast and faster should be like minimum. More lower than that, it will just make your PC lag like crazy and you will suffer a lot, you know, when playing different games and stuff like that. So go very fast. If you're struggling, you can go super fast. But the footage, again, will be very blurry if there's a lot of stuff going on. For our profile, we want to keep this at main. This is the only thing we can choose. Look ahead should be turned off. Psycho visual tuning on GPU zero and max B frames at Two. So these are the best recording settings that will be giving you the best quality with not too much usage on your PC and the huge file sizes. And then for the audio, you want to change this to 320 bit rate, uh, you know, just because why not use the better audio quality? I think the normal one is 192. So just up it to 320 and it will be sounding much, much better. Once you've changed those settings, make sure to also go to advanced over here and enable this really, really nice feature automatically remux to MP4. What this does is, like I said, we can record everything in MKV, but after you're done recording and you click that stop recording button, it will automatically convert all the MKV files to MP4. So you can use that for editing in Premiere Pro or whatever else you're using without any issues. And you will still keep that same quality and you won't suffer from the data loss if anything happens. So enable this thing right here, apply, and you are set. Once you've changed those settings, go to your audio mixer over here on OBS and right click on the audio tab right there. Go to advanced audio properties and here we will see a bunch of different tracks. So these tracks are what we enabled in the previous settings at the beginning of the video. 
So if you want to have your desktop audio be the second track, you can do that. So basically all the gameplay and everything happening on Windows will be on track two. And then if you want to have your microphone, for example, on track one, just enable track one and disable all the other ones. So enable track one for your mic and then track two for your desktop audio. You can do track three for different things if you want, but that's how you can set it up. And once you record and go to the editing software, you will see different audio tracks for each thing, which helps you so much when editing. And that's basically it. Once you've done that, apply, try the recording, test it out. If it does lag, if you drop some frames, change some settings, like I said, and see what you can do and make it look Perfect. Hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure to drop the like. It would mean the world to me. And if you don't already know, I do stream on Twitch three days a week. Link is down in the description below. Let me know if you have any issues. I will be answering them down in the comments below. And if you want to see more of these OBS guides, make sure to check this video right over here. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and have a good one. Bye bye.